Hello, my name is Dr. Carlo Carandang, and I'm a psychiatrist. We have a question regarding why GABA is not in COMPRO. First off, let's talk about what is GABA. GABA is an amino acid, and it is also a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, which inhibits hyperactive neural circuits in anxiety. So basically, GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, and it serves to put the brakes on neurons which are hyperactive. So in this case, GABA works to put the brakes on the anxiety circuits which are hyperactive and therefore reduce anxiety symptoms. However, when you swallow GABA as a supplement, it does not reach the brain as GABA as a supplement when you swallow it does not cross the blood brain barrier. So when you swallow GABA as a supplement, it goes to your stomach and then it gets absorbed into the bloodstream. But once, once the blood gets to your brain, it doesn't cross the blood brain barrier and therefore the GABA that's in your bloodstream does not really reach the brain. So hypothetically, oral GABA does not, is not effective for anxiety. So hypothetically, why would something work for anxiety if it doesn't actually reach the brain? That's the reason why we have what's called GABAergic agents, which enhance and bind to GABA receptors in the brain as these GABAergic agents do cross the blood-brain barrier and serve to enhance GABA and bind to GABA receptors and therefore reduce anxiety. The prototypical GABAergic agent is the, are the benzodiazepines such as Ativan, Valium. So these benzodiazepines enhance GABA and they bind to GABA receptors and therefore are very effective for anxiety. However, there are many problems with benzodiazepines as they are highly addictive, they can cause dependence, um, after you've been on them for a while, you could get tolerant to the effect of the benzodiazepines. So there's just too many problems with benzodiazepines and therefore when doctors prescribe benzodiazepines, they're only usually prescribed on a short-term basis due to the numerous side effects of benzodiazepines. There are other GABAergic agents. So in Compro, we have included four GABAergic agents, which includes L-theanine, which is an amino acid, lavender, lemon balm, and passionflower. These last three are herbal supplements that are in Compro. So L-theanine, lavender, lavender, lemon balm, passionflower, these natural supplements are GABAergic agents as they enhance GABA and they bind to GABA receptors in the brain. And as I mentioned before, all of these GABAergic agents cross the blood-brain barrier, so they do have an effect in the brain, whereas oral GABA, when you ingest it hypothetically, um, should not affect anxiety. However, that being said, there is one study that found that GABA reduced anxiety and also en enhanced immunity when given to subjects who were exposed to phobic situations. So here we have one study that shows that oral GABA used as a supplement actually reduces anxiety. However, there are no other studies showing effectiveness for anxiety in clinical situations. So there's this one study that shows that healthy subjects who were exposed to phobic situations, actually GABA served to decrease their anxiety. The other problem with oral GABA for anxiety is that it requires 1,000 milligrams to 1,500 milligrams daily for it to be, to have an effect for anxiety. 
So here's another reason why we did not include GABA in Compro is that is that it required too many milligrams for a little capsule and pill. So at one to one and a half grams of oral GABA per day, this is more of an additive to food rather than packing it into a little pill to swallow. So this is the reason why, another reason why we didn't include it in Compro. So in conclusion, more studies are needed for GABA in anxiety. As I, sh as I showed you before, there was only one study that showed it had an effect for healthy subjects who were exposed to phobic situations and it reduced their anxiety, but there's no other studies. And hypothetically, GABA should not work as it does not cross the blood-brain barrier. So why would you why would you take something that does not even reach the brain? And we know that anxiety is a brain disorder. So why would you swallow something that doesn't actually affect the brain? So that's really why we didn't include it. It just doesn't reach the brain. So why what what effect does it really have? However, if it does turn out to work in future studies, then it really should be a food additive as it just requires too much of it to actually have an effect for anxiety. So you really can't place it in the pill. Thank you for listening. I'm Dr. Carlo Carandang.